Diet soda is gonna give you fatty liver. What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about diet soda and fatty liver or steatotic liver if you want the mouthful. But first, make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment, FTA, follow the algorithm, you know the drill. So this comes from a new honey search paper that examined the association between diet soda consumption and metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease. So this is using a sample of the NHANES data, which is basically this large repository of dietary recall data that many studies have used to look for associations between certain disease states or metabolic biomarkers and different components of food, different foods, different types of diets, all kinds of stuff. So they referred to metabolic dysfunction, steatotic liver disease as MASLD, M-A-S-L-D is the denotation. And since that is far less of a mouthful, we will refer to it as MASLD the rest of the talk. Their conclusions were, we found that excessive diet soft drink consumption was associated with the occurrence of MASLD. Additionally, BMI may play a mediating role in the association between diet soft drink consumption and MASLD. Basically, like the risk of developing fatty liver. Now, again, it's important to point out that this study was using epidemiology. Epidemiology is where you're looking at, for example, the consumption of one thing and the incidence of something else. This is not the same quality of evidence as, say, a human randomized control trial. Now, why is that? Because people who drink more diet soda may also have other characteristics inherent to them because people don't just do things in isolation. They may have other things that are going on that may have contributed to MASL, and I'll get more into that in a few moments. But in, for example, a randomized control trial, what they would do is randomize people into a, for example, a diet soda group and a non-diet soda group, and they would see what happens to their fat in their liver over time. Now, the reason randomization is important is because, again, if you're looking at epidemiology or cohort data, many times it can be explained by confounding variables where somebody who is more likely to drink diet soda may be more likely to be obese. And we, we see that actually, we see that. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Was it the diet soda or was it the obesity? Now in a randomized control trial, through the process of randomization, you can assume that any inherent differences in characteristics of the participants will be randomly distributed across the groups, which means that any difference between the groups can be assumed to be from the treatment rather than some inherent property in the participants themselves. And that is the major reason that randomized control trials are considered the highest quality level of evidence in a study. Now, I'm not saying it's a bad study or anything like that. I'm just saying it's important to understand the levels of evidence. Now, when we look at this, yes, they did find that people who consumed more diet soda had a higher incidence of spasm. I'm going to read to you a line out of the results that pretty much I think we should just end the video after this, but I'll elaborate further. In addition, BMI was positively associated with the occurrence of Mazel. Further, the direct effect of diet soft drink consumption on Mazel was not statistically significant, but the mediated effect was significant. What that means is when they just looked at diet soda consumption, it wasn't statistically significantly associated with Mazel, but when they use BMI as a mediator, it was. Which means BMI explains why people had mazzled. Now, why do people who drink diet sodas have higher BMI? Because we have talked about in the human randomized control trials where they give diet soda in place of regular soda, people lose weight. And even compared to water, people lose a little bit more weight typically with diet soda compared to water. Not because diet soda is a fat burner, but just because it appears to occupy a sweet taste that perhaps just causes people to consume less calories. Why do people who drink diet soda in this study have higher BMI? It's a reverse causation sort of thing, most likely. Which is, it's not that people who drink diet soda become more obese. It's people who are obese are more likely to try to attempt to diet and therefore more likely to select diet soda. <laughs> Another example is people who have more attempts of dieting are more likely to be obese. That doesn't mean dieting makes you obese it means that people who are obese are more likely to attempt to diet. And we have shown people who are ob obese are more likely to make more diet attempts and they're more likely to consume diet soda. In a discussion. So 
People who sent me this paper were like, no, look, man, giant son, you causes fatty liver disease. Anybody remember the character from Hercules, the Disney movie? Like one of Hades, little minions, and talk like this? And, and that was my best attempt at it. Anyways, people were very, very, very excited about this paper, especially the anti artificial sweeten. Aha, see? We couldn't get them on heart disease, we couldn't get them on cancer. We couldn't get them on it makes you gain weight, but we got them on this. No, you, you actually didn't. I'm open to having my opinion swayed, but this, this, this study does nothing to sway my opinion on diet soda. Especially when you look at the average BMI in people who drank diet soda was 30% greater than people who didn't. Hello, there's your explanation. People who have more body fat have more incidence of mazzled. End of story. Okay, cool little interesting association. I'm not knocking the paper itself, because again, it's data, and the authors did admit that there was no association between diet soda and mazzled without BMI as a moderating effect. And they even did say in the discussion, it cannot be excluded, that is, those participants diagnosed with mazzled may be more inclined to choose diet soft drinks. But they kind of made it like, this is a small chance of this. I don't think so. The one thing that did make me chuckle was, in their discussion, they said artificial sweeteners can promote insulin resistance when they're trying to explain their results. I looked up the study that they used to support this. Of course, it was in rodents, and of course, it was where they were feeding an amount of sucralose over a long period of time. It's a rodent study. We just, we have not seen that in humans. We do not see that in humans. In fact, there are meta-analyses now showing that artificial sweeteners do not impact glycemia, insulin release, or insulin resistance. Do we want to take a rodent study or do we want to look at the human randomized control trials? I promise one day we'll make a shirt that says human randomized control trials. I'm not ready to get worried about this. I'm really not. It's interesting data, but again, I think what we're looking at here is a reverse causality, which the authors even admit. And again, the take home is there's actually no association between diet soda consumption and mazzled when they don't use BMI as kind of an intermediary moderator. Guys, if you like these study breakdowns, make sure uh, you check out my research review reps. Okay, every month we break down five studies that are popular in nutrition, fitness, and we break them down in a way that's palatable and easy for anyone to understand, even if you don't have a science degree. So we're trying to become a bridge between hardcore scientific research and stuff that you can actually implement. So we tell you what the researchers tested, why they tested it, what they found, what their conclusions were, and frankly, whether or not we agree with the conclusions based on how they measure things and how it fits with the overall body of literature and what it means for you and if there's any changes you might want to make based on this evidence. So click the links in the description, check that out, and I'll catch you guys next week.